Now, one big mistake that students will make is they'll say that the center is going to be a negative one comma two. Please do not make that mistake. Now it makes sense because you can see a negative one and a two, right? But that is going to be wrong, okay? What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is go over an easy, a medium, as well as a hard example of finding the center and the radius of a circle in standard form. So let's get right into exactly what you need to know and how to identify those parts of a circle. So you can see in this first example, we have x squared plus y squared equals seven. Now the reason why this one is pretty simple because it very closely resembles our actually our equation of a circle when we have a center at the origin. And that equation is going to be an x squared plus a y squared is equal to a r squared. So there's something very important that I said. I said, this is the equation of a circle when the center is at the origin, which again is going to be at the point zero comma zero. So in this case, if you like, if you just have an X squared and you just have a Y squared, the center is going to be at the origin. Okay, now another mistake that a lot of students will make is we can see that um, R squared is gonna be the same thing as seven, right? Now, a lot of times what students will do is they're like, well, I don't know, maybe they'll square the seven and it'll get a 45. No, 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 that's not what you wanna do. We have R squared, right, is equal to seven. So therefore, when I wanted to go ahead and solve for R, what I'm simply gonna do is take the square root of both sides. Now you remember, when we ever introduce the square root, you're taking plus or minus, right? So R is going to equal plus or minus the square root of seven? That doesn't make much sense. Because remember, the radius represents the distance from the center to, the, um, to any point on the circle. So therefore, the only distance that's gonna make sense is going to be a positive distance. So in this case, we can say that my R, or my radius of the circle, is going to be the square root of seven. All right, now let's go and get into a problem that is actually off center. And the reason why I know it's off center is because these little numbers right here, this one and this two, what that's doing is that's actually shifting the graph. Now to understand how the graph is being shifted, what we need to understand is the equation of a circle when we have some transformations. And that's gonna be an X minus H quantity squared plus Y minus K quantity squared equals R squared. Now I've introduced two new variables and what these two new variables represent is going to be our new center of the circle, right? So originally when we just had X squared plus Y squared equals R squared, the center of the circle was at the origin, zero comma zero. But now when I have an H and a K, that is going to be my new center. So I can say whatever the center of the circle is, is now going to be the HK. Now, one big mistake that students will make is they'll say that the center is going to be a negative one comma two. Please do not make that mistake. Now it makes sense because you can see a negative one and a two, right? But that is going to be wrong, okay? So what we need to understand is we want Want to be able to write this equation right in this format and i think the best way to kind of like represent or understand this is to actually use an extra set of parentheses right now this again this is a mistake that happens over and over but if you can get over this hump and understand this i promise you will not make this mistake again at least not intentionally so what i want you to see here is what we can do is think about this as a like x minus a parentheses h, right? So I'm using these extra grouping symbols around the h just to say that like, I want to create h as its own value. Now I'm using the extra parentheses around the h just to kind of like extra protect it, right? But they're not really adding anything, adding extra value, right? They're not changing the problem, but you'll see why this is important. Now I'm gonna have a plus, a y minus, again, parentheses k, right? Quantity squared equals r squared. Okay, now what I wanna do is I want to be able to rewrite this equation using the exact same parentheses, but it has to be in the form of X minus parentheses H, Y minus parentheses K. And this is how everything's gonna change, right? Because this one, I can write that, like that is fine. Like that's X minus parentheses one, all right? And now this one is, I need to rewrite an addition problem as a subtraction problem. Well, how do we do that? Well, remember, a minus a negative is the same thing as adding, right? So what I can do is I can rewrite this as a Y minus a negative two, quantity squared equals R squared. Now there's something very important I want you to see. By rewriting this in the form with these parentheses, hopefully you recognize that H is equal to a positive one and K is equal to a negative two. So that's the exact opposite that a lot of students would think it'd be, right? A lot of students will see the negative one. They're like, oh, it's a negative one. No, 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 it's a positive one, right? Oh, it's a positive two. No, 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 the answer is actually a negative one. So in this case, the center is actually going to be a one comma negative two. Now an easy way that you can kind of um, get by with this is just remember it's always the opposite, right? That X minus H, the Y minus K is kind of saying like, it's going to be in the opposite direction that you would actually think it's going to be. Now for the uh, radius of the circle, we don't want to make the same mistake, right? We're not going to want to square 25, right? We're going to want to take the square root of that and hopefully you recognize this one's a nice one. The square root of 25 here is just going to be a five. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is your center and the radius of an equation like that. All right, so now let's end it on a little bit of a fun problem, right? We have some fractions. We all love fractions, right? Um, and this one also has some other interesting things. Besides the fractions, you can see that there's a transformation on the Y, but there's no transformation on the X. So again, just think about it. Like if X is not being transformed anyway, then we're not shifting the circle or the center of the circle 
like left or right at all, right? So that's gonna stay at zero. But the Y, you can see this nine is two, that's actually gonna shift the center up two units, okay? So again, another way you can kind of think about this is really just an X minus zero quantity squared, right? And therefore you're saying you're just not going over zero. Um, now you could rewrite this four. Dividing by four is the same thing as multiplying by one fourth. So that's exactly what's happening to both these equations, right? Now the Y minus two, quantity squared equals five. Okay. Now a lot of students will say, all right, well then, you know, the cent center looks like it's pretty easy. That's going to be a zero comma two, right? And the radius is going to be the square root of five. No, not that fast, right? So remember the equation of a circle only worked when it was 